Good evening. I'd like to call the uh, East Lyme Board of Finance uh, special meeting for Monday, March 23rd to order. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I already did. I told him to start at six thirty. Well, I got it right here because I just called it two seconds ago. Does that mean it's not on? It's not live. It's being taped if, if you hit record properly. You can fix the back of your hair right here. Did you go live for the uh, meeting? Oh, that's great. Thank you. He said he's going live. He had to, he had to dispatch something. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. Um, we'll move on to delegations. Is there anyone in the public that would like to speak? Ms. Rack, your name and address for the record. Good evening, Karen Rack, 27 Black Point Road. Um, unlike others, I'm not here to ask you for anything. I'm no special interest group, I'm no department, I'm just an individual, and I am going to ask one thing to hold me harmless. Um, basically, every year, for basically as long as I can remember, you just ask more and more and more, which is less and less and less for mine and my family. Now, some people will see that as selfish. However, I think it's being self-interest and trying to protect my family, quite honestly. And uh, some people may call it selfish and greedy, and they call asking other people for their money <laughs> progressive and enlightened. I quite honestly see it the opposite way, that um, it's not that way. So I'm going to give you some reasons why I think there should be no increase in any spending whatsoever. Cross board. Can't talk about line items in the Board of Ed budget, and we know that. Just flat fund them. They can figure out what to do. It's full of stuff that is not mandated by the state, that are extras. You can probably find just a million there in just one line item. But uh, I was looking at some statistics um, from the U.S. Department of Treasury, Fiscal Services, and from the St. Louis Fed. And our federal debt, which everyone has a piece of, um, prior to 2008 recession, the national debt was at $9 trillion. Uh, since that time, it's doubled. So everyone's debt has increased significantly. All sectors of the credit market instruments, liability levels, prior to the recession, it was at $50 trillion. Today, we're closing in and have exceeded $60 trillion. Each and every person in this town is responsible for that. The child born today, taking its breath at this moment, is born with that debt. The velocity of the M2 money stock. Well, I don't know if you know it or not, but the velocity of money usually gives the indication of a healthy economy. When the money circulates rapidly, it means the economy is healthy. A slowdown in the circulation means that it is not. Since the recession, the velocity has fallen and continues to go down. You can see by the chart right here. Here's 2008 and how we have continued to decrease, and it's continuing to fall as we speak. Home ownership rate for the United States is at a 20-year low. The civilian labor force participation rate has not rebounded. This is from the feds, so they have their accurate information that they've taken. The civilian employment population ratio, prior to the recession, 63% of the population was employed. During the recession, that ratio fell to 59 percent, and it recently is back up exceeding 59 percent. The consumer price index for all urban consumers, food and beverages, food that we have to put on the table for our families, 
has risen, risen, risen. Just keeps going up. The real median household income in the United States has taken a dive. If you look, it's actually began back in 2000. We've never recovered. Um, basically, according to the Social Security Administration, 39% live below $20,000 a, $20, a year, make $20,000 a year less. 52 make less than 30,000. 63% make less than 40,000. And 72% make less than 50,000 a year. We're talking about ability to finance. And the government social benefits to persons like federal supplemental nutrition programs, SNAP benefits and the like, have increased dramatically. Looking at the budget and the different departments, I was just perusing them um, <coughs> kind of quickly, looking at some of the percentages of increases. So I don't think that this budget is what I would call um, a bare bones budget by any means. In uh, Department 101, the selectmen, line 412 is up by 66.67%, and line 320 is up by 10%. In Department 103, the tax collector, line 216 is up by 8.3%, and line 258 is up by 6%. In 104, Department 104, line 212 is up by 55.5%, line 311 is up by 9.36%, and line 241 is up by 85% for an overall in that department of 11.96% increase requested. Unacceptable. In department 107, line 311 is up by 9%, line 320 is up by 18.8%, and overall that whole department is up by 4.5%. In department 115, in line 921, that's a 20% increase. In department 117, line 215 is up by 12.3%. Line 246 in that department is up by 100%, so obviously that's a new line item. And line 320 is up by 5.26%. In department 118, which is finance, uh, line 211 is up by 5.29%. And line 421 is up by 566%. Just reading what's on the website. Department 120, line 500 is up by 11.5%, which is our contingency. Overall, that is up by 62.4%. Department 126, which is the Board of Finance, that's overall, you guys are up by 13.4, because line 231 is up by 14.29%. I have noticed this recurrence when looking through all the departments that the line miscellaneous, I don't know what it's used for in every department, however, it seems to be pretty high percentages of increase. Department 132, line 212 is up by 8.24% for an overall 5.9% in that one department. Department 134, Line 210 is up by 7.6, and line 415 you should not be funded because the friends of the Smith-Harris House basically said they were going to fund that. Now they're looking for the town to fund that. That's what the description said that went with the budget. I'm just reading what was said. Perhaps that's changed. I see Mr. Nickerson shaking his head, so perhaps that's not going to happen. Department 136, line 225 is up 50%. Line 320 is up 60%. Line 214 is up 12.5% for an overall 32% increase in that department. I can keep going. I have another whole, you know, through the departments, I'm sure you see those line items that I'm talking about. So I think you have a lot of work to do. And I would like to see flat funding. I'd like to see my family and maybe others also uh, be able to keep the fruits of their labor and to help their other family members and to help their neighbors if they choose to do so. Thank you. Thank you. I can't. Is there anyone else in the public that'd like to speak at delegations? Anyone else at delegations? 
third and final time we'll close delegations and go on to new business under budget reviews at the board's pleasure we've had a request to move ledge light health district section 108 to the first slot I think uh, mr. Mansfield has a couple other towns to hit that are in their budget discussions as well so Steve if you want to come up to the podium shall I first of all thank you for putting me up on the agenda I do have a uh, board of uh, finance meeting um, a public hearing over in Waterford immediately following this so I appreciate you allowing me to go first. Uh, first, let me introduce myself to the folks who don't know me. I'm Steve Mansfield. Uh, I've worked at Ledge Light Health District for the past 17 years, and I've been in the position of Director of Health for just over a month now. So, uh, Ledge Light Health District continues to provide comprehensive public health services to our member municipalities, including the town of East Lyme. And in December, the Ledge Light Health District Board of Directors voted to approve the director's proposed per capita rate of $7.15. This new per capita rate is a 2.4% increase over the previous year's budget. The primary reason for this change to the increase uh, is an increase in the personnel costs associated with our collective bargaining unit, which calls for a 2.5% increase in the coming fiscal year. It should be noted that in this year's budget, uh, it doesn't include any pay increases for any supervisory personnel at Ledge Light Health District. Uh, Ledge Light Health District has a strong fiscal history the Director of Health and Board of Directors have worked very hard to keep the per capita contributions from our member municipalities as low as possible. In fact, the proposed per capita rate is lower than the per capita rate that was paid by our municipalities back in 2007. And on behalf of our staff and the Ledge Light Health District Board of Directors, we thank you for your continued support, and I'm happy to try and answer any questions you may have. I have a question. Could you, do you know what the uh, explanation is for the reduced per capita rate from fiscal year 11 to 12? Let See, the, the rate went up this year, collective bargaining unions, yep. right? So what accounts for almost a 10% drop? Um, I can't the, imagine, you know, I can't imagine the union saying that give us a 10% cut. Uh, the Ledge Light Health District Board of Directors and the Director of Health at the time made the decision to lower that per capita rate based on feedback we received from our municipalities. It was a particularly difficult time uh, for our municipalities, and the Board of Directors had earmarked a certain amount of our designated funds for basically a rainy day. So we decided to take some of those des designated funds and move them into our operating budget, and we're that allowed us to reduce the per capita rate that we charge to our member municipalities. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Steve, what has the feedback been from the other uh, towns in the district? Groton, Ledger, New London, Waterford. I know you're going to Waterford tonight, but. Yeah, this will actually be our third meeting in Waterford. Uh, so far, the response has been very positive. Um, a lot of good questions similar to the ones you've asked um, some of them are specific to our municipalities but um, so far everything has been approved as presented by the Board of Directors are there any other services that you are required as a health district to perform in any of the municipalities or it's uh, the services we provide to East Lyme we also provide to all of our other municipalities so the only things that we do above and beyond what we're normally required to do is if we have a specific contract with a municipality to provide a different service, but that's above and beyond what's supported by per capita funds that our municipal members pay. Okay. Any other no questions? No, is Beth, that microphone Steve? working? Can you hear out there? It, it is there. working, All perhaps. Right. I wasn't leaning close enough. Okay. Is that better? Yeah, I just wondered for the folks that were watching on TV. Any other questions, Steve and Steve? No. 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 Hearing you, none. Mansfield. Thank you. Thank you very much. <coughs> okay, planning department. 
117. I see Mr. Gaisho in the audience. Good evening, Gary. Um, I, I noticed, uh, based on the public delegations, there was a comment about an increase in a specific line item of 100 percent. That was the GIS analyst position. Um, I believe that uh, the first selectman presented the budget to you as it was going unfunded, um, as we're not going to increase or have any new employees. So moving forward, there should be a zero percent increase in that, that position. Wh which item is that? It, it, it's listed in ours as zero. Zero. Very yeah. well, thank you. Um, the increase in uh, line 215, maintenance of equipment, that's uh, contractual obligations. Um, unfortunately, our vendor, Tie and Bond, has increased their fees for the web hosting service that they provide, uh, our GIS or mapping. You can go online and look at uh, assessor's information, um, aerial photos, and uh, it's used by uh, numerous departments. Um, Miscellaneous supplies increases from that's a uh, line 320 from 950 to a thousand. Uh, it's we've typically been right at the the, the max annually, um, so I just made sense to, to budget a thousand dollars. I'll do my best to not spend it all. Um, so I don't know if you have any specific questions. Uh, I, I'm sure you've read the, the memo from uh, Mr. Nickerson uh, regarding the GIS position. So I think uh, taking his advice and educating both the Board of Selectmen and the Board of Finances through the, the benefits um, that could be had by implementation, I'll be happy to work with both boards uh, moving forward, and, and hopefully in the coming years we can have a full implementation of, of a GIS program. But if you have any specific questions, I'll be happy to answer them. I have a question on the line 215 that you talked about. So when a vendor comes back for the maintenance of equipment, and imposes a 12% increase. Do, do we routinely push back? Do we ask questions on the basis of that? Do we do we do anything with that? Reasons why? Yes, we ask the vendors. They've got, on their end, staffing issues. Um, it's, they've moved to a new platform. Um, so that was an increase in, in what it's going to cost them to provide us services. So what I've done is I've started reaching out to other vendors Yeah. to start shopping around for... I like for how you think it. A, a better price. Um, several years ago, they they did lose uh, an employee to a municipality, and my, my feelings were that services weren't as well as they could have been or could be uh, currently. Um, I've talked to Donna um, Beckich and our tax assessors, who they uh, they pay a, a substantial amount um, annually to have our parcel maps updated, and that all that information is digitized and becomes part of the, the GIS map on online. Um, and she's indicated interest in maybe shopping for vendors that could get that job done uh, yeah, cheaper. Yeah, I just, I just didn't know if it was customary for us to, to push back on those kind of things, or do we just say it's cost of doing business, or how do we handle that? Don't, didn't know. Well, I'm going to push back. It's, we have to. If we have lean budgets, as, as yeah. we've had in the past and over the last several years. I think that, that's all we, we have to. It's, uh, we're looking at that whole GIS platform, cor correct? We're looking at another vendor for the whole package. Yeah, what's interesting well? c coming up, the, the Council of Governments is entering into a contract with Applied Geographics, um, and there may be opportunities there based on what they want to do is digitize every uh, map that gets filed in, in the offices of the town clerks. So, essentially, any sub new subdivision that will be digitized, complements of the COG, uh, we can benefit by that data. So, there's a there's p potential cost savings right right off the top um, so to provide the other services that the online application uh, will let us utilize such as uh, querying data and information um, they'll have to still provide that that's above and beyond say just digitizing parcels but they could do that maybe at a, a reduced rate as compared to our current vendor okay good thank you Gary I'll uh, point out I think Gary started to that um, there was a assistant planner proposed and a GIS analyst, another um, 
person per, personnel in this department. We chose at the Board of Selectmen level to uh, push that off for at least a year. Uh, we can revisit it when the economy is better and when our grant list is improved. Um, you know, the planning department is run with Gary, who also wears the inland wetlands hat. A town this size with as much inland wetlands as we have, with the growth that we have, we could use help in that department. Uh, we're looking at uh, reaching out to area universities, looking for internship potential. But, you know, you're talking about someone in training uh, that might actually take away from Gary's time uh, doing the work. So we're trying to find that balance. We're trying to find out how we can best manage that department most efficiently as possible. Uh, but we need more man hours down there. There's no question about it. Um, Gary does need help. Um, his com both his commissions have uh, uh, petitioned me. Uh, strongly, I might add, yeah. uh, with with great arguments that you know other towns have an inland wetlands guy, a GIS guy, and uh, towns our size. I'm not talking Bridgeports and Waterburys. I'm talking about Waterford, mm -hmm. who has a full time inland wetlands person who is on the job 37 hours a week that we can't borrow. I tried to go over and maybe borrow you know 10 hours off of that person. We can make you know kind of regionalize in the wetlands. Not a, not a chance. That person is up to her ears. So. They have millstone and we don't. Right. They have $3 billion right. in grand lists and so we have, you know, less than two. So, right. So just so you know that that's coming up, but we made the decision, the hard decision this year, not to, not to fund that. So, or later. Any other questions from the board for Gary? No, thank you, Gary. Thank you. Hearing thank you. none. I'll um, the next Speaking of in the wetlands. In the wetlands. Oh, that 132? 132. Change your hat, Gary. So it, it's essentially a flat budget minus uh, the salary line item. So first selectman restored to current funding. Does that mean this line is flat now? What are we saying here? It, it, was, it was requested an increase of 50% to bring the position oh, back to a, a part-time position. 50%. 50. Like the, it was requested that we increase the, uh, the wetlands right. officer dramatically into this department. This is the other person we're talking about here. So I, I brought it back down to where we were, but not necessarily. I think we're, we're putting a few more hours. I'm trying to figure out this 8% versus... That's, that's what I'm getting at. So if you look at the, um, the planning department where we just were, yeah. you'll notice that the, the salary for the planning director is at 1.81%. So... It's the way we charge it to the two departments. Yeah. Um, we had to adjust it somewhat. So that's why planning is only at 1.81 instead of a 3% increase. And the difference to make the, the, sal the total salary, I see. it's more in the... Um, right, it's a higher percentage on a salary <coughs> amount. Exactly, yeah. Okay, I understand. Thanks. Ultimately, Gary you know, wears two hats, so he will get his 3% increase. Uh, by contract, yeah. but it's just split up funny. I, I do have a question. Go ahead, Steve. What, what do you use your consultant for? And thus far this year, you've used your consultant for nothing because you've paid nothing. That's correct. We, uh, it's a pass-through line item. Um, essentially, is if we get a complex application and the commission chooses to hire a consultant to do a peer review of either a soil scientist or wetland biologist uh, report, uh, depending on the project, again, if it's they feel that it's a complex um, needing, uh, I'm, I myself am not a certified soil scientist. I am qualified, though, to, to, to point out that it looks like a wetland. Show me it's not. And then the onus becomes the applicant's job to, to delineate that wetland and or prove that it's not a wetland. So in a complex uh, application such as, a, say, Gateway or uh, maybe Hope Street, 38 Hope Street was another large project, the commission may feel that it warrants uh, additional review. And with that fee, uh, we end up charging a significant application fee on our application, so it gets charged back to the, the applicant. So whatever we use well, out of there gets... So there's, a, rev there's a revenue side to that. 2014 right. was 
was also zero for the whole year. Well, didn't we, didn't we talk about this with zoning as well, that, that we put it in there kind of as a reserve account. Right. If they needed it, they would yeah. come in front of us to say, in fact, they needed it. But really, if they're not using it, it just gets returned to when, the when we general fund now. When we established that line item, um, it, it started out at $5,000, and I think uh, the previous administration reduced it down to three because it was just that. Like, it, we don't use the account. It only gets utilized when the commission says we want to charge a, a fee, and it's it, it wrapped up into the application fee. So uh, you could reduce it down to a thousand dollars; it wouldn't make a difference per se. If, if we reduced uh, it to zero, and you went and charged a fee, because by statute you can, by your ordinance, by your whatever your regulations, you can. Wouldn't would that just cause a problem? Because we'd have to come back for. So for the three thousand um, dollar consultant fee, we have a corresponding revenue for that. So if we spend the three thousand dollars, we would also see a corresponding revenue for it because, as Mr. Gaishel indicated, um, we would charge the contractor the fee to pay for that consulting service. Mm -hmm. So we have the expenditure, but we also have a corresponding revenue for it. So the revenue doesn't come in, and you would see no revenue and no expenditure. If we did not put a consulting fee in the in the budget and then the commission found that they needed one, we would have to come to the boards and do a special appropriation right. in order to um, use those services. So in our projected surplus for this year, that 3000 from last year is coming back in, exactly. right? Okay. Yeah. Any other questions? No. Hearing none, thank you, Gary. Thank you. Thank you, Gary. Zoning, Department 116. We have Bill Mulholland in the audience. And the chairman's here, too. And the chairman. So you might have to zoom out for these guys. Good, good evening, everyone. Uh, first of all, I'd like to introduce the new chairman of the Zoning Commission, Matt Walker. Uh, he's here tonight, <laughs> and uh, since I do it every day, I'll probably jump right into the agenda. But if you have questions of him, you certainly can ask them that. Um, as you can see from our budget, um, there's little and no increase. We haven't asked for anything. Uh, you will see the salary items. Those are what the town has proposed towards, uh, for staffing and for salaries. Our other items have not changed. I want to point out the consultant line item, which you were just talking about previously. I have an application that came in the other day. It will be on our agenda next Thursday night. It's another Ashagachi Hills application. We anticipating using that line item this year and probably be looking for a little bit more to hire a special consultant to look at some, at some issues that we think might be need to be further examined and a little closer than what we've done in the past. Um, so we will be dealing with that again. I don't want to get into it too uh, deeply because there is pending lit litigation on previous applications by that uh, company. Um, so looking at the, the rest of the items, they haven't changed. Uh, we haven't asked for anything. Um, we've always run a pretty lean budget. I do want to note uh, one thing that our revenue stream this year is almost double uh, than what we've taken in in the past, and that's due to the, the gateway project and several larger projects that you see as you drive around town that are currently under construction. Um, we are busy in the office. Uh, the commission is, is somewhat busy. Um, we anticipate some gateway applications on some larger commercial projects in the next six months. Um, you'll probably be reading about that one. Um, the gateway looks like it'll eventually be built out. They tell me that the revenue to the town is $2 million.